Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me, your host. My name is Chad Medved. This is my show. I appreciate you being here. Today is the day. If any days are the day, today is in fact the day. We got a special one this week. It's a long one. We got a two-parter. We're going to have part one. I'm excited about it. But before we get to that, there's important shit to talk about. Turner Dairy Farms, creators of Turner's Premium Iced Tea and all the limited edition Turner's Milks, got a fire one on the shelves. I got to tell you, I finally had that candy bar flavored limited edition milk, and it's gas. Uh, My store got it on deck. I got a I got a guess that it would be selling out pretty damn soon. So if you haven't had it yet, run on down to the bodega, find it. If you need to find it, turnerdairy.net, top right corner, type in your zip code. Your stores will pop up and then you could find the closest one. And then you get on your little pedal bike and you pedal your ass down there and you go grab yourself an ice cold milk and you chug that thing down and then you pedal your ass back up a hill. Um Maybe milk and then pedaling bikes might not be the best combination, but you know what I mean. Go grab yourself a Turner's. Uh, The important things that we're talking about this week, the reason that everyone is here this week, uh, like I said, special episode, uh, two-parter. I'm going to give you a little taste this week, so uh, don't hate me for it because, you know, this is just a little taste. This week, I sit down with Steven Jaskulski. He is a Pittsburgh local who currently lives over in Venice, and uh, he is a painter, artist, all-around great, interesting human being, and uh, someone that I've been following along with for a few years now. You know, I, I, I don't know how I came across his work. I don't know who put it in front of me, but for the last few, I don't know, probably five, six years, I've been following along with Jazz's work, and uh, he is, I mean, it's crazy how far he's came in a handful of years, tell you that. Um, like I said, a painter, fantastic. I don't even know how to describe his work. Uh, you just have to go to his Instagram at S T E P H E N J A S K U L S K I at Stephen Jaskulski. And uh, you could check out the work that he does and the type of painting that he does. Um, but I've been waiting for him to come back to Pittsburgh to get him in the studio. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm a fan of his work. I really am. He's he's grown to be one of my favorite. And uh, I just, I was excited to get him in here and talking to him because, you know, he, he ended up having a real, real wild story. You know, like something that I couldn't even... I couldn't even guess what he was going to tell me. It turns out he was going to, he was trying to become a, you know, his, his dream in life was to become a professional baseball player. And then some crazy shit happened and he ended up being, you know, a professional painter and a pretty damn good one. If I do say so myself. And, uh, here's his story. You know, I don't want to speak it for him. I want you to listen to it and uh, hear him tell it because, uh, you know, it's a great episode. So without further ado, Episode 218 of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with Stephen Jaskulski. I gotta use the telephone. Hello? I'll call you right back, podcast. I was trying to figure out how I even uh, kind of like even came across your work. I have no idea. Probably Hoyle. Probably Billy Hoyle. I feel like that, that that's probably the only way it could be because like, you know, we have other mutual friends, but like he's probably the closest that... Uh, the closest like mutual friend that we have, like you have a history with him, and then like I'm sure he's been sharing some of your stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was I was following you even before the ID Labs album, so I was like trying to look back at like how it even came across that, and I couldn't find uh, an origin story. But it has to. We'll, we'll give the credit to Billy Hoyle and Time Bomb as well. Yeah, I mean, like I didn't, but I didn't even know. Uh, 
I didn't even know that your I didn't even know you had a history with time bomb. Like, like after I started like researching everything, I see that now. <laughs> but after I start like researching and like you know uh, seeing you know, kind of like your older posts on Instagram and everything. That's kind of what I do is like, I'll just go back and like, look at everyone's history, make sure they're not like terrible people. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's it, like, once I started like seeing everything, I'm like, I've had to seen you in the past, like numerous times. Oh, definitely. Cause definitely. I, I definitely used to shop down there as well. Um, but you always grew up in Jefferson Hills. You're from there. I'm from Clareton originally. Did you um, go to Clareton? No, I went to um, TJ. Um, my parents, you know, they thought I would get a better education if yeah. I went to TJ. My yeah. dad's from Clareton. You know, that's where I was born and raised. And um, yeah, they just wanted me to, they didn't think I could, you know, go to college or, you know, they just didn't think things would work out for me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like Thomas Jefferson has like a, as a, a lore about them, you know, mm-hmm. good school, like football team is incredible. My dad's a football coach. You know, uh, he was, you know, he j- yeah. was all about football. So. Oh yeah. Bill Chirpak, baby. Chirp, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I played football all through EF. So it's mm-hmm. like TJ were like, you know, they were like our kryptonite. Well, actually we weren't good at all. Everything, every team was our kryptonite, but TJ was like, you know, that was like, uh, insane. Them damn dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's wild. So, uh, you have you ever done a podcast? Um, yeah, I did one, um, but I didn't. I was just like I did it with somebody else, the person who runs like the collective I work with. So it was just I chimed in for like twenty minutes and then I was out. You never did anything where you kind of get into what you do. Um, when I was younger, people would interview me a lot. Um, like when I was just on Venice Beach and stuff, like I yeah. would get a lot of people being like, "Hey, dude, can I come out like interview you?" And so I'd get to speak a lot. Yeah, um, but not like. In the past few years, when I actually have like figured out like what I'm like what I'm doing and yeah, stuff. Um, so I haven't even got the chance to like speak uh, up, up about anything really. Um, yeah, I mean, like I I see you know you definitely came a uh, uh, crazy long way since like the stuff you were putting out back then to now, obviously. But it's like I I'm like fascinated kind of with just like who people are, you know, beyond like what everyone's known by, you know, like, yeah, everyone knows that you do artwork now, but it's mm-hmm. like, I want to know why you do it. And like, so, I mean, did I hear that you were originally going to be a baseball player? Is that like, was that like your dream at first? Yeah, totally. Um, let me, let me ask you this. Let me, can, can I have you, can I adjust this for you? Yeah. So it sounds better. Yeah. You give me any instructions to, I need if I'm. Is that better? Perfect. Yeah, you could hear it a little bit crispier. Yeah, definitely. But uh, a baseball player originally? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, baseball was like, uh, if I never even dreamt about like my future outside of baseball. So um, that was like a life. Like that was like you know your your set your sights were set on baseball. Mm-hmm. For I mean, for how like when when did you stop playing? Uh, that, that all coincides with me becoming an artist. I, I got in a car accident um, my junior year in high school. Okay. Um, and I uh, had a severe concussion, but I had a lot of concussions, but th- this one was really different. Um, it was like a seven car pile up. So it was, I was coming back from time bomb. Yeah. Um, Holy shit. Seven car pile up. Um, you know, I didn't uh, get back to school my junior year at all. Um, and I, I started developing... I was, my parents, they both work overtime. There was nobody to, um, for, th- to, to help me like rehab, like everything I was going through, uh, going through. Yeah. And, um, no, it was really trippy. I lost 95 pounds. Um, I started looking different. Like I had like a flu for like three months after this car accident. Um, Jeez. it was, that's why I say it's not, wasn't a normal concussion. Yeah. Um, I started looking different. Um, I mean, but I started developing like anxiety. Like I think, you know, I had anxiety. Um, yeah, a lot of things that probably came with it. Yeah, you know, I think it was just my natural reaction. I didn't have too many friends come to see me, um, you know, or ask me what's wrong. You know, I know kids are, you know, in high school and stuff. So, you yeah, know, for sure. The benefit of the doubt, you got their own life going on. But, um, yeah, no, nobody came to, you know, uh, see if I was cool. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you haven't been in, you didn't come back to school. What's the deal? And so I was uh, a little thrown off by uh, everything. So I think, <clears throat> you know, 
that was it for me for baseball. Um, but but it was like up until your your junior years, so like when you were junior. playing pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it, it's it's a confusing timeline. And then like the senior year, I was cold to come back, but I was struggling in school. Like yeah. I couldn't go into the cafeteria. Yeah. And like look at the kids because I was like, whoa, like these dudes aren't my friends and stuff. You know, I just didn't want to. Yeah, you had them. a period of time in life where it's like, you know, there was like uh, a line in in that moment and it's like no one ever walked across that line so you're like you know fuck these people yeah it was kind of like um why do i gotta be here um you know uh and and i was just feeling different i i didn't realize that teachers find out if you have something going on like anxiety they say yeah. anxiety adhd all this um, stuff all this stuff yeah and um no i'm not trying to like take away from like you know struggle or, or like stray off the path of this topic but yeah. can i like rewind you a little bit yeah no, totally, totally. Okay. i get off track so you need to no do no, that no that's all right i i feel like i just immediately like threw you into like yo tell me about this crazy car it, accident dude, it's yeah it, it's yeah. but it, it's it's interesting because like i i uh i don't even know where i read that you were you know focusing on baseball and then like it kind of switched into you becoming an artist and then i'm looking at your instagram and i'm like I just had like a completely different like direction on like where you were going because I didn't know any of your history. And then now I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, if you know, like how does he have this like long history with time bomb? And then I start looking into that. So, you know, it's pretty wild to see, but uh, you know, when you were younger and you're playing baseball, like, are you getting like looked at by people? Like, how do you, like, did you know that you were like, I mean, everyone plays baseball when they're younger, but you like knew that you were like excelling. Yeah, yeah, you know that was. I mean, I played baseball, basketball, and football, but baseball was like the yeah the thing the, you the one, my bread and butter. You know, like yeah. that's just what I was naturally good at. I slept. You know, I get a new bat or something. I sleep with that thing. Like a new glove, I'd sleep with it. it was, every single day, I had my dad taking me out to to work. You know, just to practice. Um, yeah, every day. Uh, I loved it, dude. I loved practice just as much. I loved playing. Um, yeah, everything about because I was a pitcher, man. So I get the control. Uh everything you know i, I control it know. all starts with you yeah it all starts with me and it's like a just chess game man it's like addicting because you know you you know you're trying to get in there head you're trying to be a step ahead of the hitter you got to manage the game you got to manage your emotions it's a good set you up for life type of thing you know absolutely um, it's a rare you know there's a rare it's, it's rare to be able to like do that and do it well yeah and I, so I, I was i was a good player um i would say i was good you know i and i figured uh like my dad's football coach was Jack Sorensic, the general manager of uh, the Mariners. Really? So I was like, um, you know, maybe if I'm good, you know, one day this dude will throw some scouts my way. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But um, I didn't get the, just because all this stuff that happened in high school, I never got a chance. Like, I always played these travel baseball teams. A lot of my friends are in the pros yeah. and stuff. Um, you know, so... You know, I didn't get a chance to even show. Yeah, like, what you really I, I didn't had. even get the like the the good stuff. You know, where I go out and prove myself. Um, yeah. So that was that was a, a bummer. But it's not, it wasn't about that. I just like I just like the game, man. So absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's I, interesting I, because everyone is a young kid. You know, that's like one of the like the default sports that people play. And it's like everyone plays a year or two of t-ball and then baseball. Right. And then, you know, some people stray away from it. It's like my dad coached for like, I think like 15 years. My brother played forever. But like I only played up until like, you know, it must have been like Mustang or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I just went to football because I'm just a big dude. But it's interesting, like the culture of baseball, you know, it's like the pirates are a good thing to speak to. It's like, we haven't won, a, we haven't won in a long time, but people are still like living and breathing for it. It's just right. America's pastime. Yeah. And, and it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's a relaxing game too. I mean, it's, it's just, you, it's, it's great to go to the ballpark and just, it's, the, it's to me, it's the most like just peaceful thing to watch. You know, I love football games too, but that's yeah. a whole different, you go to the ballpark, it's, you know, um, I don't th I don't think I've ever watched more than like maybe 10 or 15 minutes of baseball on TV, but it's like, I love going to the, mm -hmm. I, th I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter if you like the game or not. It's like, if you go to the stadium, just like that energy, yeah. you know, it's powerful. It really is. Yeah, man. I, you know, like, uh, go do you still watch baseball? Yeah. Listen, you know, I actually, um, I listen to like almost every pirate game wow. on the radio. That's um, awesome. When I'm working and stuff, like I, it's like my favorite. Summer's the best. Having you know, I wake up and I have the whole game to wow. listen to. It's it's nice, man. Yeah, it's cool because you could probably like. I feel like to to an untrained person who like maybe just wants to jump into baseball, listening to it on the radio is probably difficult. 
mm-hmm. you know, but you know, someone who has that like insider, like kind of experience with it, it's probably just like, you know, yeah, it's, it's sick. Yeah. It's a cool thing to like, cause now, you know, I, the same way I feel for baseball, I feel for painting, you know, it's attacking some every day, all practice every single day. So it's like, um, having my old love, like, you know, having that there with me when I'm painting, it's like the best thing, man. One addiction and one passion turns to another. Right. And uh, so, yeah, dude, baseball is still a big part of uh, my life, and I, I still love it. I go out there and, and play good right now. I could, yeah. go, you know, I could, I could still pitch right I now. Play once a, uh, I play once a year on a uh, softball benefit tournament, and, like, you know, you get that itch, and, like, I'm trash. I got to tell you, I'm terrible, but it's like, you know, you catch a ball. It's like I put on a baseball glove. I just put my baseball glove in the in the uh, garage right there because it was just sitting back there, but it's fun. You know, I love it. It's, it's definitely a fun time. Um, it's interesting because like, you know, I, I'm like super impressed by your artwork. It's like, I, I really, really enjoy your artwork. And like, that's why I like, I was like kind of berating you a little bit to like get you on here because like, you know, it's pretty fascinating to see uh, where you were. I mean, a handful of years ago, the artwork you were putting out then, to like the artwork you're doing now is just like, it's wild that it's like, it's almost like I was looking at your Instagram and kind of like studying it a little bit. And I know that that's a terrible way to look at someone's like, you know, resume of work, right. but you could like see a, 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 a switch kind of shift. And it's like, just like a, a, a fineness of like the stuff you put out. I don't, I don't know, dude, it's pretty wild. And I was really fascinated on like kind of hearing about how this kind of all takes a hold of you. Yeah. Were um, you into art whenever you were like, I mean, playing baseball still or no? Nah? No, nah, that's the thing. Um, you know, I didn't think that that was possible um, growing up. I didn't think that like I could be, I was one or the other. Like I was like an athlete or like, you know, I I thought I'd get made fun of like if I was into anything uh, like that, you know? So yeah. um, I liked to draw, but it was never uh, a main focus. You know, we didn't have art, art in the house, just like a lot, you know, a lot of homes. Like, we didn't have like, you know anything to look at you know and we have Andy Warhol here in Pittsburgh but I I just had no um just wasn't in your universe wasn't yeah it wasn't a part of my life like in any way um which is crazy because now it's like what I live and what I breathe um but it was it it, it needed that 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 rug taken up from under me you know with the the life that I had to kind of show me like hey man you're not even scratching yeah, the surface of what we got here. So, like in high school and shit, you, you like, I mean, were you taking art classes? No, man, it's like didn't fit with the art classes. Wow, because because the art class they like the athletes that screw around, you know, smoke weed, and yeah, like, you know. But I was like also r- respectful, and so I like didn't get like I just was like invisible in art class, man. I don't even re- remember. Anything. Wow, like it was weird. That's crazy to think yeah. about. Yeah, definitely wild to like you know kind of how it. <laughs> you know, just it comes full circle and you're just like, you know, now I'm an artist. Uh, do, do you, uh, do you, do you remember like, uh, it's kind of a weird question, but like coming up, do you remember like really caring about anything like that at all? Like any sort of like, you know, what you like to wear on your clothes or, yeah. you know, I guess that's like a form of like your artistic expression. Mm-hmm. Cause like, that's the way I've never been good at like, you know, making something, painting, drawing, anything like that. But I've always good at, I've always been like, that's kind of how I express myself with just like, you know, clothes, accessories, hats, stuff like that, shoes. But uh, it's interesting that you, I don't know, it's just wild to me that you weren't like someone's like, yeah, I was always into art whenever I was growing up. No, okay, and it took a while to feel like um, normal with it, you know, like I, because I've been this outsider with it for a long time, you know, it's in, uh, you know, I do, like, I see, you know, most kids have grown up every day, you know, drawing, this is what they wanted, you know, and yeah. uh, for me, it was kind of like something that, like, I was like a second life that I was given, um, and I feel like I'm just like a little kid where I'm still experimenting with things, <clears throat> but, you know, it's my job, too, which is a trip, you know, and I'm pretty deep into it, now. it's been like my job for like seven years, but most of those years have been just me, like, almost in like a literally at the beginning like how kids you know start to experiment sh- with shit you know so it's been yeah it's been really a trip um now i mean i i'm 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 terrible at interrupting and like kind of just taking you on a different tangent so i apologize <clears throat> ahead of time and i apologize for any sort of like gross comparisons that i make no, but don't i'm not I'm, I, it's hard for me to do it now whenever you you know you got in this this 
you got in this wreck, you mm-hmm. know, and, and kind of changes your life. You don't right. go back to school your junior year. And then, you know, like, are, are you physically like, are you physically like balled up or was it more of just like a mental thing that you were dealing with? To be honest with you, man, I was really messed up. Um, I was like really messed up because, uh, like I said, it was like this flu for three months. And yeah. like, I was like, what do you mean? Like a flu, like you were having throwing like f- up all day, like, um, just nauseous all day, like throwing up all oh, everything. I like, couldn't keep food down. Like I couldn't, um, and it was scary because it was like, I, I slept in the bathroom for almost three months. I ran the water bill. I, Jesus. Needed, I needed the shower, um, the sound of the shower. Yeah. I just pretend I wasn't even like there. I was like in a rainforest or something, man. Because I wanted to, really, I wanted to bash my head off this toilet. And You're like, like 16 or 17? Yeah. Jesus. And like, it's not my parents' fault that they couldn't um, be there to help me. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, the doctors yeah. didn't say like, well, there's anything like, you know, we don't know. They didn't know what was going on. They just said you have a concussion. But it, it just, um, my parents, they were at work. So it was just me all day, you know, I was wow. just sitting in this bathroom and uh, with the shower on, like it was, it was terrible. Um, but it, it like, it, it t- totally changed everything, man. I, I really wanted out. I wanted out of, of all this. I wanted to just be done with like life. Cause I was like, it, I, I wasn't having a good time at TJ to begin with. Are you um, talking about like, you know, like, like being suicidal? Yeah. Oh no. I totally was suicidal in the midst of that. Yeah. Yeah. Be- uh, just because and, I and didn't know what was happening. Nobody can explain it to me and shit. It was, but, but before this, there was no, there was like none of that sort of like thought. And then mm-hmm. like this moment in your life, like it, it fucked you up. Yeah. To that point. Yeah. And that's terrible. And, and you, you were coming home from time bomb. Mm-hmm. What happened with this wreck? Um, you know, I, I, I did, I did well with the, you know, we, I was coming back with my friend, uh, Jason Ciccarelli. He works down at ID labs. Um, we would always go together and I came back. I, I hit this, uh, pa- you know, the bridge, um, like by Sandcastle with the Wemco building. I know exactly what you're talking about. So shit like iced up. Um, it wasn't snowing or anything. It was just so cold. So everything iced up, uh, the bridge iced up. I came across, my, I lost, you know, traction. You know, I got control of the car before we hit the, uh, you know, one of the barriers. And I looked at my friend and I said, like, oh, we made it, man. We're good. We didn't even hit anything. As soon as I said that, like seven cars, boom, 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 boom. Holy fuck. And, um, you know, next thing I kind of like consciously remember was like, I was like in an ambulance and like, I was like, you know, going to the hospital. Jesus. Um, so it was like, yeah, it was, um. You know, not, it wasn't a good accident. Um, it was a, it was a worse. I just was in another one recently, but it was it was definitely it was uh, terrible. But I ne- I needed it as well. Because, yeah. Like I didn't even have like you know for as much as I have inside of me, I just wasn't finding any of it. You know, and I must needed this all to you shaking out of you to show me like you know like what you know like you you got this purpose here, dude. Like it, it you really like so far from it. Um, so I, I it all like needed to happen. It's just. Like, you know, you, I, lo- I looked at it like terrible pain and terrible, but it was like, a, it really was like a blessing. Are you someone that believes in like, uh, like kind of like manifestation and like destiny type of things? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, a lot of, you know, I believe in a lot of crazy things. Um, that's all right. I, I love it because like, I'm fully, you know, I entertain it all. You know, I'm, I'm probably like, uh, I try to be the most open person that I can be like, doesn't matter what it is, you know, uh, you know, people's you know, life, you know, politics, whatever. It's like, I'll listen to anything. Mm-hmm. I might not agree with it, but right. it's like, I will listen to it. I'll chew it up myself, apply the things that I agree with to myself mm-hmm. and, you know, work that in. But yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's interesting, like the destiny type of things, you know, it's weird because you said that, you know, you guys kind of got control of it and then just got slammed in again. Mm-hmm. That's, that's wild. Yeah. Um, Was he all right? Yeah, Jason was cool. Yeah, he was good. That's great. Yeah. Um, that's terrible for you that it kind of balled you up to a certain extent. How long were you in the hospital? Not long. Um, and they, they released me the same night. So it was um, just like you're, a concussion like tore yeah. you up. Yeah, man. But it was trippy because I've, I've had a lot of concussions. Just yeah. playing football, everybody gets Yeah, so. for get sure. I've had some too. A lot, you know. But the most you get is like, you know, a headache and like maybe like, you know, a second or two like of like missing where your where your thoughts are. It's like you're like, huh. But nothing that crazy, you know. Like that's it was it was um, you know. I, like I felt like I was the only one like tripping about it too. Like yeah, man. Like I'm this ain't normal. Like you know this ain't uh this can't just be a concussion. Whatever I got going on, 
But uh, yeah, there was no like explanation for it. Um, and it was just like three months of hell. Yeah, three months of hell. It changed the way I look, man. Like I, you know, you see me now and stuff. But I, what didn't look like this? I was like, uh, you can sometimes see in people's eyes and stuff that they don't know why they're here yet, or they don't know. Like I was just like like a like a baby version of a person. Like my my eye, like I didn't look like me my whole life. You know, like I, in my head. You yeah. Know? And then once this happened, like I started like, oh shit, you know, like what's you know, what's happening? This is you know, it, it was it was weird, but I, I felt like, um, yeah, man, I started to become like me, I, you know, like and I never was, which like was broke cool. out of like this mold. Yeah, um, yeah, I was like a heavier set kid, you know, and that's what limited me in sports as well. You automatically assume heavy set kid, not yeah, athletic or not, you know, by good footwork. You know, I was a real athletic dude. It just um, because of my weight, you know, I just kind of like automatically got like a, you know, like oh, that dude can't play or whatever. Bro, you're talking, you're preaching to the choir over here. Yeah. And I still made it work though. Captain of the varsity yeah. football team, baby. We didn't win a game, but like mm. I was out there hustling yeah, dude. for a big boy. I mean, but you're right though. It's, it's interesting because like, it, you know, your, your weight definitely puts a cap on things. You know, people, they want like the, you know, the elite body st- structure, right. you know, cultivate, this this great being out of like you know and you got to have a great canvas so to speak but uh that's interesting yeah it, you know I, you know but i looked at like guys like jared lorenzen and shit i was like well this dude's you know like the quarterback for kentucky big dude you know yeah. i was like well every once in a while you see dudes in the mlb you know, <laughs> yeah daniel vogelbach yeah man, like <laughs> who's the who's the other uh He's a real big pitcher that throws like sixty miles per hour. Oh, uh, Bartolo Colon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, is huge. Shit, man. Is that like will? Is that sheer willpower? Yeah, from I don't Bartolo know. Colon? I, don't I, I, uh, I feel like I've only, like I said, I don't watch sports that much, but I've seen like videos of like his pitches on like ESPN replays, and I'm like, you know, how did this dude get in here? Like, I, maybe if I would have tried, I, yeah. you know, could have been right. all right. But then that's taken away a lot from that guy. That mm-hmm. dude probably smoked me in a race at any day of the week, but. Uh, now three months for you to like go through all this, like, you know, terror and everything, trying to like, not really figure it. It's like, does it get to a point where that like, you know, every day you're just sick puking. Is there, does it get to a point where that stops? Um, yeah, it did stop, you know, uh, it did stop. And then I started to like do my own rehab, uh, for baseball and everything. Like I started to run in the mornings cause I wasn't cleared for physical anything. But yeah. I started to get up and go run in the morning. I'd go to the basketball court with my tee, bucket of baseballs. I hit off the tee every day. Yeah. Um, so after I started like, you know, um, getting back on my feet and being like, I'd never was cleared again for my, I couldn't pass an impact test. Uh, no matter what I did, I couldn't pass my impact test. Wow. Um, so it was like I started rehabbing myself because I was like, I got to get back. You know, I got to get back into like, you know, I got to swing the bat. You know, I got to do all this. Fight weight, baby. Right. And, and you know. Um, Did you feel like, you know, at that moment, yeah, you're not puking and everything. But like, you know, if you had to say a percentage of like how you felt at that moment, like, are you like 75 or did you feel like 100 right then? Um. I know it's a long time ago, but it's like, a, I'm trying to like, think like, you know, cause you're saying you're like pretty much debilitated on this floor yeah. the whole time. And then you're like, Oh, I'm out running now. It's like you, you, you felt better enough to be like, you know, I, I feel like things are all right now. Well, in that three months, I felt like it, like a lot of things slipping away from me. Like I felt like, uh, oh, yeah. like this can't happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. what if I don't like, you know, what if this, you know, if I don't get up and do this now, I might just like turn into this like stagnant. Yeah. Right. That's understandable. And, and so I just, um, you know, I, I just like wanted to get back to things. And like, like I said, the doctors weren't telling me I was like this, anything else other than a concussion. Yeah. Like did it, did, did, I mean, I assume that they gave you like a bunch of like scans and everything. Like they just, they didn't like see anything. It was Um, just like some weird thing. Yeah, dude. It was, you know, that's terrible because you don't have an explanation and it's frustrating, I'm sure. And it's like, you, you can't really explain it what you're it's like you're just like trapped in this like thing and you can't really explain it i can't even imagine that it, it was a weird time and being that you know that age or whatever i was at 17 um yeah man it was tough to like rationalize a lot of this and i still wonder today like what the hell was going on there like what you know what was that you know um, yeah but but now but like i said now i do look at it like you know had that not happened like I don't even think I'd ever even have a fighting chance at, at anything, you know, because it was only baseball at that point. I don't, I don't think I could have found any of this without 
really you know all that shit happening yeah like if like if baseball if baseball didn't work out did you have like a plan b of like a career no uh, yeah (laughs) like no interest like you had any other time bomb man i liked um yeah i like my clothes like the same way we were talking about earlier i I, that's the way i express myself is that i you know i I love uh streetwear i just thought like you know i'd get on a time bomb and i'd be like whoa dude like everything you know? down there yeah just everything seeing down people there. express themselves through the brands 10 deep all this shit it's yeah. like i loved all that the hundreds the um, hundreds i still got like i mean they were like 10 deep and the hundreds were like my main brands in the beginning just because they sold clothes that were like portly kid friendly you know 10 deep always had a 3x down there yeah it's yeah. like i still got a 10 deep vest from ta- from the old time bomb but uh it it, it really is clothes were you know and Time Bomb, we were just lucky to have that. Oh, it was amazing, dude. It was the coolest place, like especially down there at Sh- in Shady Side. Yeah, it was just the coolest place to be, man. And energy, yeah, you know. And I can't even imagine, like, just talking to like you know Billy Holy about it, and like you know, just hearing you know just through like stories of his. It's like I I I I know the feeling that I feel just the times that I was in there. And I was just a casual shopper. You know, I lived far away. So it's like, we didn't even make it down there all the time. Right. It was like bi-monthly. Mm. And, uh, you know, the random like Black Friday sales where you get down there at like 4 a.m. or whatever. But it's like, you know, that place had such a crazy energy because you'd go there and you'd be seeing these stacks of mixtapes and everything. And you're like, there ain't another place that you, I've like shows you, there ain't another place you can go to to have that like sort of like that incubator for just like passion don't matter if it's artwork graphic design rappers like graffiti artists mm-hmm. it was just like it was like a, a, a breeding ground man um and without i mean that the, working down there and having an opportunity to be down there um definitely just that and that happening at the same time as this was was how did you get linked up with them just you going down there and like being like, I'm looking for a job. Yeah. Well, it was more than that. Like I'd go down there every day, you know, I'd see Billy Hoyle, I'd see Brick, I'd see Katie. Um, I would beg every day. I would seriously, I would go in there. I'd be like, dude, I'll sweep the floors. Like I'll do anything you ask. Just let me like, you know, like you don't got to pay me. Like I just want to be down here. Let me be a part of it. Yeah. Let me intern down here. Let me intern. And I'll uh, go grab a coffee. (laughs) Cause I was just like, you know, every time I go and I tell brick, like, you know, like this place is just like, and I just like, I need to be, I want to be here. And I'm, I'm almost there to getting him on here. I've, I've messaged him back and forth numerous times and, the last time I hit him up, he was like, I'll do it. It just got to be, you know, whenever I'm doing it. But before he would always just be like, I can't do it. So it's going to happen. It needs to happen. He need, it needs to happen. He needs to talk more about it. It what, needs. What he, I mean, and people need to talk about it more too. A hundred percent, dude. I mean, do you think as someone who like was, was there in that time, do you think that like, have you ever heard of another place that was like that in that way anywhere else? No, Even I mean, in different states, really? I know in LA, you know, they always had Fairfax. They had La Tierra. Yeah, um, but... But, you know, like, in some of those stores on Fairfax would kind of, like, take me back to, like, I'd be like, oh, okay, like, I feel like I'm in the old time bomb here. And, yeah. Uh, but there just wasn't that, like, personal thing either, you know? Like, those stores are very, like... Everything in LA is very, it's not, I'm, it's, I'm personal. Yeah. Know? It's all saturated over there. It's like, there's a lot more like, you know, big fish out there, so to speak. But like here, it's like, it, it was wild because you saw like the people that were like making some shit shake, like that's where they wanted to be around. And like, you could tell that you could tell where they're, you know, real recognized real. That's really what it is. And, and, you know, and, you know, knowing that Mac, you know, was always down there. Wiz come through there. Brick was always pushing their tapes. Yeah. And um, like Boaz. BD, uh, the 58s. BD, the know. 58s, man. Uh, Chevy Woods. All man. of them. It will always be down here and stuff. And I just, uh, yeah, man, I just figured like, this is like, the if there's anything, like what interests me, like, you know, people would say like, oh, Heinz Field or something's like, you know, sacred ground or whatever. But I'd go down a time bomb and be like, this is sacred ground. Like good things happen here. Like people find you know, uh, man, like, you, you know, like I, you, you find, um, just like, I think about it, it's just a place to be. That was yeah. the only place I really ever felt like I had to be yeah. in, in Pittsburgh, like where I was there, where I was like, okay, man, I'm comfortable. Like I'm happy, you know? Yeah. Like these um, are my people that I'm, that I'm supposed to be around and, yeah. and that I want to like feed off of and like, you know, want to, 
want to be like when, when you're young you really need a place to be yeah like, and when you don't have any you know you just feel strange I always feel strange you know feel being growing up and stuff is strange but um yeah man just having a place to be and having that like open my eyes to everything that i didn't like yeah they just put i mean like Br- brick brick and all the people down there you know just putting people on to like the dope shit mm. you know it's like that was a place to like go to find the dope shit you know, and, and you knew it, you know, you knew if you found it in there that like, you know, that was some dope shit, you know, yeah, like that's definitely. all that, 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 that was all right, you know, and, and there was such a variety of it. That's what was so cool because, because like, I didn't wear the same shit that my friends wore. Like I was a big dude, so I wasn't wearing skinny jeans and like, you know, that type of like, you know, that type of style. Like I, I needed, like, I couldn't be wearing slim fit tees and yeah. shit. No. You know, it's just like, you know, it was Husky kid friendly down there. That's why it was also a good place to just be. So, I mean, after you're berating them and asking them for internships, mm-hmm. you know, do you finally like get let in? Yeah. I don't know how, I don't remember exactly how it happened. I know brick eventually said, all right, come down here and like sweep the floors, you know, <laughs> like you can't, you know, and, uh, and when you know when he finally and Bill, you know Billy Hoyle too was yeah. a big part of that too. How old are you? Twenty eight. I'm gonna be twenty eight. Yeah, next month. Um, but Billy Hoyle, you know, every time we went in there, he treated us uh, like he like he was our you know good oh, yeah. friend and stuff. Every time we went in, uh, Hoyle was always like still a great person. Yeah, love him. Yeah, me too, man. Um, he he really treated me like a like a big brother down there, you know. Like that's how you know that's how I kind of looked at him and everything, because he had been in working there for a while. He knew all the ropes. He was the closest one in age to me. Yeah, he had um, an opportunity to not fuck with people, but it's like he always showed people. That's a, that's one of the same reasons that like I've still kept in contact with him over the years. It's like like we didn't we didn't go to the same school. We just met th- through mutual people, but like always just been a hundred from the beginning and it's just like he's always someone because i mean you grow up 15 years knowing someone like it's easy to like let them like you know trail off and do their own thing and not keep track with right. their life but you know i think he's been on here three or four times now and it's just like i i just he's always been so respectful and i've never seen him be a dick to people or anything like that mm-hmm. and it was always just great energy so it was always just important to keep in touch with him he's, he's a really good dude man um billy Hoyle was awesome yeah, I, I I just missed him in L.A. and I felt really bad about it. He was just out there with jams. He's yeah. been doing a bunch of stuff, and I and I love that dude too. Um, I haven't met him yet, but I like that they're working together. They're a sweet. I mean, combo. out of two hundred yeah. and I think you're about to be two two eighteen. He was probably one of the most nervous I was to interview jams, just because I didn't know him and like you know I didn't I wasn't familiar with his music, but uh, it's one of the ones I'm most proud of because like it really like threw me out of my element. Because, like, you know, I'm not, like, a crazy, crazy hip-hop head. Like, I listen to the fucking regular shit. You know, I listen to what's on the radio and shit. But it's, like, he's, like, someone who is uh, underground to the point where, you know, you got to kind of know your shit. And I just want to always come correct to people and, like, give people's, like, passions, like, the same respect that they give them themselves. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just don't want to just do some bullshit and, like, give them a fake-ass fluff interview. But it was a good one for sure. Yeah. No, that's cool. You got to do... You know, work with him. I think he's gonna have be, be real successful, dude. I mean, I just grinds from when he started working with Hoyle. I started keeping up with him a lot more. He reached out to me about maybe getting a piece or something. And yeah, uh, yeah. No, I like sticking with. I like following him because, I, like I said, I like them as a combo. Yeah, and uh, he's motivating too. He's it's mo- like he's always grinding. Yeah, and it's cool because he knows a lot of the same. I think I know so many kids through the internet and stuff in Chicago. Yeah, you know, good painters. Um, you know, good rappers. Well, you know, a lot of talented kids come from chicago yeah and he's like connected to all of them and stuff so like you almost see the like the uh what is that brand a half evil oh yeah i got a bunch of their shit so like i you know i i I know like i follow the you know we follow each other on instagram the half evil dudes and stuff on and twitter and everything and um you know just over the past couple years i've been seeing like oh shit you know you know that you know the world gets definitely a lot smaller and um yeah I, i i hope i get to meet him soon uh yeah he's Jams is dope. Good people for sure. Yeah. Hoyle too, man. It's great to see him pursuing everything the way he is attacking everything now. I, you know, 
Yeah, uh, it, it's just cool to see people still like grinding and shit, and like really like you know like sharpening their sword and not like mm-hmm. you know kind of like taking things lightly. Because so when did you know if you're working in Time Bomb like you know probably when what you're 18 whatever 19, mm-hmm. and it's like when does I I saw like you know as you're working in Time Bomb I know you're doing a lot of photos I know you're like you know just doing that type of like work, you know, you're just, you know, you're working down there. I see you're doing work with people like uh homegrown, like homegrown outfitters. Yeah. Those they dudes were, gave were, us a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like those stuff, dudes yeah. were cool. I knew them real well. And like, you know, it was just like, it's cool to see all them pictures because it was just like, it's nostalgic. You know, even the clothes you're wearing, you're wearing like Pittsburgh made shit. And it's just like, right, I remember Pittsburgh. seeing that all in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely wild, but it's like, you know, in this time, are you doing artwork? Mm-mm. When does that come into play? So, so I wanted to I wanted to get spray cans, right? I wanted to I wanted to write because I you know I'm selling you know caps to all these graffiti artists coming yeah. into the shop and stuff, and you know I'm meeting these dudes. And I'm like these dudes are just they don't give a shit about anything. These graffiti artists like really like come in and slam a bunch of change on the on the counter, you know, like oh, you know I need I need like two fats. I need to, you know and they come yeah. in. And I'd be like okay, I like these dudes, and I so I wanted to start writing. But Brick would never let me buy cans, um, which was crazy. He actually kept giving me these Rebel Eight black books, and he was like, "You want to, you want to write, you want to, you know, you want to make something, use the black book." He said, "Cause he he didn't want me to get fines. He didn't want the graffiti, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know." And especially I didn't know what I was doing, so he would just give me these black books. So in Time Bomb, that's where I started, like, you know, all the, and I was inspired by Mike Giant, and, you know, and Rebel Eight and all their stuff, and. So, like, just having the black book and, like, yeah, that was my first really digging into drawing and stuff. Mm. And, uh, yeah, he just, I, and I only had that because I, I just kept bugging him for cans and stuff. He was like, you can't, <laughs> you know, he's like, I don't know if they're gone, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I, the black book, I started drawing really for the first time and stuff and having, like, you know, I'd fill the whole book out, man. And I just, you know. You were just immediately one. enjoying it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I would sit down there and I'd draw a lot, you know, and I wasn't very good, you know, so I was just like, okay, I got to, you know, next one, next one, yeah. next one. And um, are you just, you're writing like, you know, tags and shit like that? Or are you yeah, drawing I was anything trying else? To. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to be, yeah, I wanted to, uh, I want, I think it was like Dabu or something. Yeah. It was like some strange shit that I was writing. I don't know if I <laughs> saw it in a movie or something. I was like, Dabu, that's cool. Um, but yeah, well, you know, I wanted to go out and just uh, bomb walls. My my good friend Tony Duff, photographer, I yeah. did all this work with. He was like the be- one of the best writers in this city at like seventeen years old. He racked up seven thousand dollars in graffiti task force fines. Couldn't mm. leave. The- but this- but I spent so much time with Tony Duff. And he was like a, f- a genius, like you know, like t- taking like you know, this kid is a ge- artistic genius. Yeah, right and, now he does video games and shit, right? Yeah, he does streaming and stuff. Now. Yeah, yeah. But believe it or not, he was he is one of the illest graffiti writers, uh, you know, I've ever met in my whole life, and he's really? also one of the best photographers I've ever met. Yeah, just the best eye, man, like for composition, for wow. He was, yeah. That's wild. He was just a little kid, man, young, you know, super young dude, like going out by himself, like it, 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 he was. You know, when I saw, when I saw when I met him, I was like, "Oh shit, dude! This dude's like, you know, I spent so much time with him too." He, I credit him a lot. With yeah, I saw you had a lot of photos and stuff with his work. Like he took a lot of photos of you and everything. Yeah, he just used me for his. You yeah, know, like to stand, and we would get close. You know, sometimes homegrown would throw us stuff, yeah. or you know, and we would go shoot it. I wouldn't say I was good for that necessarily. No, yeah, but, but just you were a person him, there. Yeah, just seeing him, you know, and his I bring his ideas to life every day was like awesome. One of the best times of my life. You guys are taking photos and everything. Like now, what happens, you know, while you're working there? It's like how does that kind of progress into you moving to California to be an artist? Well, that I mean, now that I'm remembering, because this has been so long ago. Yeah. Um, so I remember I asked Brick um, if I could in when I asked him to intern there. I said I wanted to potentially pursue this and like go to school um go out to la artwork yeah go to yeah. school go to school for um no like fashion stuff uh, 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 street, i want to do streetwear yeah but for school and shit you just go for fashion yeah you know? so i went for fashion marketing and management um so i was telling him like this is something that i want to do um like i'm serious about it like this is you know like and that's kind of what like you know he allowed me to be down there and learn stuff and uh Cause I did want to go to school for that. That was my own. My, that was my backup. Was my clothes. Yeah. Because um, I figured, yeah, you know, I like to. Do, I like streetwear. I want to 
have a uh, you know my how, hands in this game one day. How did you even get put on to Time Bomb? Like, how did you even hear about it? Probably Mac. Yeah, um, my good friend J- uh, Ciccarelli, the one that was in you know he works down at ID. His brother um, was always down there. His older brother, you know, he's like ten, twelve uh, years older than us, and he was always down there. And he was friends with Brick. And he was friends with E. Um, over at ID Labs, so he was kind of always like telling me about it, and um, yeah, he he opened my eyes to all that stuff. That's cool. Yeah, and and you like your pursuit to go to school for fashion? Did that happen? Yeah, it did. It was strange. That was a strange. Um, Where'd you go to school? The Art Institute um, in California, uh-huh. uh, of Santa Monica. Did it? Does it have as bad as a reputation as the one in Pittsburgh? You know. It's not even open anymore, so maybe it did. Yeah, um, yeah, they're, they're not open anymore. I think that that school. I've, closed I've probably talked to maybe twenty people on here that have went to the Art Institute in Pittsburgh that have said I've never heard one positive thing about it. Uh, but and you you said you had a weird experience. That's why I even asked that. Yeah, it was strange. It put me in because because like I said, I went there for streetwear. Yeah, and I wanted to do streetwear. Um, but I'm watching like, you know, my classes, I'm watching four hour, you know, Valentino movies, Lady mm. Valentino working with Lady Gaga. Yeah. And they got me drawing like flats, like women's flats, yeah. like shoes and dresses and shit, you know, and all my projects were like revolved around like dip set or something, you know, it would yeah. be like some, you know, it would be like some totally <laughs> off the wall shit yeah. compared to what they had me doing. Yeah. Um, you know, so like they would all be going to like Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom and saying what they got. And I'd be like, yeah, well, I just, I just went down to Fairfax and like, and I saw they had the, you know, I, my shit was so like just different from what different. everyone else. Was I was like doing. the only dude in the class, like any of people the people were more going towards like high end fashion, high end fashion. Yeah. yeah. And, and now it's funny because I'm sure that they, in the, these courses, I'm sure street incorporate huge yeah. got a part be. of everything now. But when I was trying to do it, it was like, everybody was kind of looking, even the teachers were kind of like. Yeah, what Dude, is this, like, like 2000 and f- 2015, maybe? 2014. 2014, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, I guess that would be so weird to think about that now as far as, like, the fashion, you know, the education, because streetwear was, like, such, like, a weird underground type thing that was just kind of, like, word of mouth. Right. Because even before social media, it's, like, the only reason I even knew about brands like The Hundreds or, like, you know, 10 Deep or, like, you know... uh you know, all them people is just through like rappers or like, you know, skateboarding was mm-hmm. a huge thing. And uh, it's, I don't know, it's weird. That's weird to think about that. Because now, like you said, it got to be a crazy big focus. Yeah, because now it's such a different thing, you know. Now, oh, yeah. Now it's so, like, you know, high fashion is streetwear. Now, you know, did you feel like that you kind of didn't have like the resources that you needed? Because like, obviously the instructors are like, you know, they're doing more of the high end things of it yeah. all, right? Yeah, they they didn't even make me present my stuff or anything because like you that's know, crazy. They kind of got that like I like I was confused like why I'm you know why I'm here and <laughs> it's crazy. But, but I got to meet Carl Kanai. They brought him in, right? Uh, you know, um, cross colors. Yeah, um, you know, he had big and Tupac wearing his stuff at the same time throughout yeah, the beef and wild. everything. So Carl Kanai comes in, and so I'm like, well, this you know. What the hell? You know, I'm, yeah. I'm trying, you know, I'm, it's like a foreign language. I'm talking about streetwear. And we're going to bring Carl Kanai in. Wow. And, um, you can get to meet him. So uh, I was confusing, you know, because, uh, yeah, like, but the, they didn't make me present my stuff. Like they didn't make, because it was just so different than everybody else's. How long, I, go ahead. No, you go ahead. How long did you end up going there? Only two semesters. Okay. Only two semesters. Like yeah. I couldn't, like I actually couldn't even sleep at nighttime because I was like, damn, I'm, oh, these people, a lot of money. Oh, like, I bet. Yeah. I couldn't even comprehend it. So <laughs> I had to get out as fast as possible. So are you like, you know, whenever you moved over there, do you know anyone or are you just, you're by yourself? I, I only went, I didn't know the difference. I didn't know the difference between Sacramento or LA or anything in, in California. It never was an interest for me. Yeah. I just like needed to go like after the accident, after not having baseball, Break I, just, out. Like, I just needed to like go so far um, away from everybody and everything. Yeah. I, I don't have any, I didn't have any family there. Wow. No friends. And um, like you move into the art Institute, like, are you staying in like a dorm room there? Yeah, I was staying at, um, like, they had, like, these, um, you know, apartments that were, like, third-party student housing because yeah. they don't have dorms. And uh, they put me in there. I had, like, a 25-year-old roommate, two 24-year-old roommates, and I was 18. 
And it was like, you know, it's like, weird. It was so weird, man. Yeah, that would be such like a weird environment for like a, you know, a, a kid coming into their own to like, I don't know. It just seems like anxiety ridden. Oh, it was. I got off the after I got off the plane, and I got to the apartment or whatever. I had a full blown mental breakdown. Like, what the? What did I do? Like, yeah. where the hell am I? Like, I was looking at all these freeways and shit. You know, I was like, how am I going to get anywhere? Like, this yeah. place is huge. Did you feel like uh, at that point in time? Like, did you feel like you know, physically and mentally, like kind of back to where it needed to be? No, well, no, I was just like a blank, yeah. blank at that point, really. You know what uh, I mean? Like, yeah, really, like a blank like, slate. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, I don't like to throw that like NPC term around, you know, because no, that, but for real, like a, it really seems like it. Re- it was like a reset, like yeah. a, like a like a, a life reset for you. I mean, obviously, it was if you know your main focus was you know baseball your whole life, and then you're just like you know fuck it, I'm gonna go and you know just kind of cast this line out here and kind of see what happens. Yeah, that's and, dope that you did that though, because like you got to have balls to do stuff like that. It, it was like something that, I mean, I can't even, now looking back, can't believe I made that decision by myself. Like my, you know, I I, I researched like, you know, the school, I researched everything. Cause what I are your parents thinking at this time? Oh, they were tripping because they were like, you can't, you can't go out there. Yeah, because um, the first thing I think of is like, you know, uh, and I'm terrible if I'm like making this assumption, but it's like a coaching type of father, you know, there's no career with art. No, no, definitely not. Is that like kind of the through line that they carried? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, they, they, in, in that, and uh, they, you know, they didn't, they were unsure why I was going for fashion. Like they, and they, I was kind of like confused why I was going for fashion as well. Yeah. Um, but that was the only program to do what I wanted to do. And then, um, just the California, they were like, just, they were like, why, like, why do you want to go to California? Like, why do you want to like, yeah, man, my, it was definitely tough for them because, I just brought it up out of the blue. You yeah. Know, I just started doing my own research and was like, I got to get mm. out of here. I was going to go to Hawaii, but then I was like, that's another, yeah. it's not even on the continent. So like, I yeah. you know that's a little, that's a little bit too far. I can't removed. drive back if I had to or get a bus or something. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, <laughs> if I need to get back, this is going to be way more difficult. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, two semesters go by and you jump out of that school. It's like, obviously you're not staying in them dorms anymore, right? No, actually, I, it, you know, I moved back um, for a few months. I here? Came, I came back here to Pittsburgh for a few months. And I okay. think I went back down to Time Bomb. Uh, you know, I was down there for a few more months. And um, eventually I went back out to L.A. and I tried with my friends, uh, Ciccarelli and another friend I had out in L.A. We all got an apartment downtown so that was like my second try, you know, in the same year. But I had to come back because, um, like, my apartment was only through the school, yeah. and, you know, and I just didn't have the the resources to even go. Like, yeah. Try to figure. I didn't even know how to get another apartment at that point. Um, so I had to come back and refigure shit out. Yeah, because it was a failed attempt or whatever. It was like didn't work out for me. Um, so I came back, regrouped, and then went back out there and, and then failed again. Um, only lasted six months the, the second time had to get out of our lease we couldn't pay rent um just shit wasn't working out again uh, in downtown so i came back again were you, you doing know? artwork at this time back no, then okay yeah no. so i was just working miscellaneous jobs yeah you know, whatever job i could get um so i didn't even have a dream at that point because once you know i was like okay well i could still have a brand i still wanted to have a streetwear brand um, yeah, but at that time, you're just trying to work to be able to stay survive, out there. Yeah, just to be able to pay rent. And yeah. Like, yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. Stressful time. And what, you're like 19? Yeah. That's yeah. that's insane. Yeah. Was, and we lived in a crazy, we lived in Pico Union downtown. So we, we you know, we had tons of chickens in the yard and shit. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, I mean, we, there's like more people living in two square miles of Pico Union than there is in the city of Pittsburgh. Jesus. They have just people like just packed in. on top of each other. Yeah, man, it's crazy. It was right off Hoover Street. Um, you know, uh, it was called South Bonnie Bray, and uh, all these really cool Victorian style houses. Yeah, that were like um, like Squirrel Hill or something. Beautiful old houses, but half the street was like you couldn't go down there. It was um, uh, it was these you know gangs and shit out there. But there was young kids. So yeah. the lady that rented to us, she was like, they're young, like they're trying to earn stripes and shit. Like you don't go come around hoover walk never walk down this end of the street yeah i mean you see like kids riding their bikes around and shit and so it, it, it was pretty, wild yeah we saw um you know that was an eye opener to living downtown la is crazy i bet it would be yeah i'm not a i'm i can't do a city like i had to i lived over right in ingram which was like 10 minutes out of the city but mm-hmm. then 
I just had to get out a little bit. I need a little bit of like space. I need a little bit of like, you know, I'm removed enough now, like 25 minutes out of the city or so where I could like be away and not have to like, I just like, I like quiet. You peace, know? man. Yeah, yeah, I like peace. peace. peace I like is peace. Important. Oh. But it, it's, it's, I don't know. It's interesting. I feel like whenever you're younger and you're going through this, it's, it's a, uh, it's a useful time more than anything because like you're learning kind of what you don't want to do what you what position you don't want to be in and like you know i don't know that's interesting so you said you made it six months again six months that only. second time yep you came back here i came back here again yeah and you moved back in with your parents i moved back in with my parents what are their thoughts at this you're like oh my son is like doing this art and it's not working i mean they didn't tell me they probably were just like damn what is he doing you yeah know what i mean like you go, he keeps trying to go out there but like, they weren't like forcing you to like do some like you know like like you, you still had the opportunity to kind of like find yourself yeah that's great. Yeah, I actually came back from that time, you know, and I've been out there for about a year now, and I came back, and this, this, this team asked me if I wanted to go. Uh, they need a pitcher or whatever, so I actually, like, went up to Morgantown. Wow. And threw, like, six innings, like, gave up, like, one run, like, had, like, Jesus. seven strikeouts. I couldn't move for, like, a week after. I was going to say, how long has it been, <laughs> how long of a time period in between a pitcher and has it It was been? a while, man. It was, like, a long time. <laughs> you know, and I was just, like, you know, living a weird life out yeah. there, you know, like, smoking a bunch of weed. You're you not, know? I'm, I'm, I assume you're not, like, you know, pitching out there at no, all. No, no, no baseball, <laughs> no sports, no athletic, no athleticism, yeah. whatever, no running, no exercise. <laughs> and nothing. you just come back in and they toss you Yeah, I was like, in. shit, I can pitch, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How fast were you throwing? I never threw that hard. Yeah. Um, you know, if I, if I'm lucky, I, you know, you just had like control over it. Yeah. I just, I just hit my spots. Yeah. You know, good breaking pitches, natural movement, good breaking ball. That's cool. Um, wow. So one time you played up there. Yeah, well, I, I always played up in Morgantown when I was younger, but yeah, when I came back, you know, they just, yeah, I just went and, you know, pitched a game just to see if I could do it. Too, yeah. And just, uh, it was great. It was like my last hurrah yeah. with baseball. You know, it was You're cool. Like, I came out on top. I'm gonna just stop here. You know, yeah. We'll be good. like yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty sick. So, what happens after that? Um, back to time bomb. Yeah, I think you know, I went back down there. Um, and like, when does like you know when does artwork really come into play? Well, you know, uh, with the t- with what was happening at time bomb, I think this time around was brick was moving locations. Yeah, um, to Garfield. To Garfield, right? And uh, we were going up there, and, and I remember you know him being like sad about the old store. And, and what everything. year did that happen? Oh, Was that remember. 2016, maybe? I think. Yeah, I, somewhere I, around there had to be. And, and I remember him like telling me, like it was crazy. It was like real, like because I didn't know what to do anymore. Because I didn't think I could go back out there. I didn't think. I remember seeing him standing around the side of the store on the steps. It was snowing. It was nighttime, and he told me like you need to go back out there. Like you need to go, you know, go back and, and like try it again and go yeah. back out there again. He was like, there's nothing here for you. And he said like, you know, like not in like a fucked up way, but he like really just said, there's nothing a here real way. You. Yeah. Go, you know, go figure something out. Like, you know, when he said that, I was like, all right, man, like, you know, um, I still remember that. Yeah. I still remember him telling me that, you know, just go back, you know, you're good. You'll go figure something out. Like there ain't nothing for you here. And, um, I wanted to be there for, you know, I was like, well, I'll stay here, man. Like, yeah. you know, like I'll, you know, give you and give the shop, you know, the Ten oil toes or, down right you on know, I'm go. like your second in command, man. I'll be here. But yeah, he told me, um, yeah, go. Um, and, and so I was like, okay, I'll try this shit again. And, um, yeah, it was like a sad end of an era. Like, you know, yeah. like I still love the store being up there. I love the refresh dudes, daily bread dudes always have, but that was like the end of that, you know? Yeah, and, for um, sure. So, um, but the art didn't come. I have another friend, Tyler Podoma, great artist here. I uh, saw your collaboration with him and it was, that's one of my favorite pieces that you, that you posted on there. You had that one of yours and then he had a hand at the bottom or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. Dude, we had a lot of really, cause we, we would erase everything that we each would do and we'd make each other do it better. Yeah. Um, our collaborations have been, he's been fundamentally like, um, so important to me uh, in every aspect of, of being an artist. That stuck out to me immediately whenever I was looking through your page. I, I looked and I, his name, and I looked at his name and it stuck out with me because I like that piece that you guys had. We Brick has one too. I don't know if you remember the chili pepper era where he was posting like a, a chili pepper emoji everywhere. Like everything he put was like, a, it was like mm. a pepper. It was like, it sounds vaguely familiar. He like was making this pepper a thing. Like, and it was just the only thing he 
with tweet it was like peppers and shit right yeah so we did this pepper piece for him and it was like a old you know graffiti style piece me and Padoma collaboration he's still is sure he here he, or out there uh, he's here he's okay, a Pittsburgh yeah. based artist um you know so he but I went up he like me um didn't know he was a painter he went to CCAs he took an art class um and realized he was good. Like he was good at this. Like he was, like, he was shocked. He was good at painting. Yeah. So he has me come over to the studio, and I'm like shocked by this place. I'm like, man, like what? You have a studio? Like, are you still hard stuff? in the black book at this time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just yeah, trying. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was okay, definitely yeah. even be more creative. I wanted to do more. Um, I had like a screen printing kit at home. I had all kind of like small stuff. I was trying. Click. I was like doing calligraphy just to like learn how to use the yeah um muscle movements and yeah, everything. The, 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 that toll and um. But yeah, he brought me over and he was like, you ever hear of Jackson Pollock? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I've heard of Jackson Pollock. He was like, you can do a Jackson Pollock right now. He was like splatter paint. And he brought a piece of wood and he got all this house paint. And he was like, here. And he just had me dump it on the wood. And then I just like moved it around and was watching it all blend together and, you know, drip into each other. And I was just like, whoa, dude, what the hell? And, he, and I, to this day. Um, he infected me with this thing, man. Like this, this really, I don't know how he got infected with it. He passed it to me. Wow. Cause in, and now it's just like a parasite in my brain in the best way possible. Yeah. It just controls my everything. And like, so that was the first that time that me. you were messing with paint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. First time. And, and I was just like my whole, like my eyes just shot open and I, it just kind of went from there. Yeah. And you know, and then when I, I that I was going back to California for the third time, I yeah. found third party student housing and I had like four hundred fifty dollar rent, um, and to live in Santa Monica. So I was, I'm going back out there again, um, and I just wanted to paint every day, dude. And I was so bad, and yeah. I just ever since he had me make that painting at at home, I would in Pittsburgh, I was painting with with vinyl records and stuff man like i was like breaking vinyl records and i was like stamping them mm. doing weird shit you know but finding yourself like right. finding your own style yeah the, the stuff that's on you like the first year instagram is like crazy to even see dude compared to like your shit now because it's like it's i don't know it looks like the stuff that you had in your beginning looks like if someone went to like a sip and swirl and is like you know it's their first time painting mm-hmm. and it's like, Oh, I'm going to try to paint a face. And it's like a fucked up looking face. Yes. And you know, it just looks, it looks like elementary. Right. You know what I mean? And like, you could tell that. And I'm, I'm, I was pumped that you like, I always hate when people take away all their old work off their Instagram and they like erase it and they only want to have like their most best pieces like and a, stuff. Yeah. I hate that because it's like, I want to see where you were in the beginning to where you are now. It's so important. And people that are like, Oh, I want to, you know, cleanse my instagram it's like why if you look at my instagram from the beginning looks fucked up you know i never posted pictures with people it just was a text and like it's so important as as someone as an interviewer that does like research on people it's so important because like my first thing was like you know i'm like i'm infatuated with the stuff you do now i wanted to see the trash that you put out in the beginning and whenever i say literal trash no you're right i don't want to take away from your artwork because at that point in time like that's your feeling and that's everything you're putting on it but like compared to what it's now it literally looked like some paint by number shit that i would do and and like no literally it was trash like when i got to santa monica like i was just grabbing like i would walk down the alley and i would like fucking grab doors that were in the trash like yeah I'd grab a big piece of wood that were in the trash and uh like that's the shit that i was like painting on and making stuff out of it was like anything i could find it was just like okay that's cool I just come back down the alley to big ass door like all right that's a big piece you know have fun on that and um it was like insane for, it was like I was just grabbing shit from the trash and painting on it. It was like fucking, you know. Yeah, finding it out, like <laughs> different things. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Like what are you like, uh, you know, whenever you're first starting this out, are you taking like, you know, uh, inspiration from other people or are you kind of just like, you know, not really looking at what other people are doing and you're just working on yourself? Oh, uh, well, I, I rem- well, I was going to museums a lot. Yeah. Um, because my friend Padoma, he taught me to go to a museum, you never take your phone, you take a sketchbook. And if you like something you see, like if you see a hand, if you see an mm. eye, if you see some hair that you like, then you draw it. 
Um, you learn how to draw it. You know, you take that from the painting or whatever. You wow. throw it through your own filter, and that muscle memory will build, right? And like you'll come, you know, you won't even know when you'll come back to that what you learned in that little sketch, but it it you know does a number to your subconscious, you know, and it's there. So um, I would just go into museums and I would sketch everything, dude. I go in there with a little notebook and I would try to like not look and then sketch it and then. Um, Wow. So I was getting a lot of, I, I, I was really learning about art history for, for, for the first time. Um, you know, I had a big textbook that somebody had given me from Santa Monica College. So I was digging through that just to learn um, about all these guys, to learn out about, you know, all these artists that come before me and stuff. Did you have people that you gravitated towards in the beginning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Basquiat. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember when I saw Basquiat's work for the first time and I was just like, I was like everything I like had understood about like art. Like I really thought, you know, a little beret, you know, a little French beret, a striped shirt, you know, a little yeah. watercolor in the park. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and then I saw that and I was like, Oh shit, dude, wait a second. I can be like this. You know, I can just do like how, like how I, I can just, I can just put what I feel. Unhinged. Here. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, um, and I just felt so, like, it was so palpable. Everything, the energy, I was so palpable, you know? And I was like, whoa, dude, like, I I need to, um, like, I, I don't need to be, like, the dude in the, you know, I, I don't have to have that so skill set to express, to express myself. Yeah, um, it doesn't need to be that precision. Nah, and that precision that, you know, now as I get better, like, your brain doesn't want the best for the work. And we'll never want the, what's rational and what our brain, what makes sense to our brain, it don't help the art so much you know your skill needs to evolve but like when you don't like you know your thoughts will ruin things man because it is really about the flow it is like i pick something up and it and it and it takes me with it. when i start thinking i could do it better i start to you can feel the analytical parts in the painting you know what i mean and they, they don't feel yeah um like that that boom energy um so you know when i saw Basquiat, i was like wow damn um and i would go to this private uh, Picasso collection in LACMA. I had a pass there, so I'd go all the time and just seeing the um, man, these Picasso, they have like eight or ten, you know, in a hallway, and these portraits and stuff. And I was just blown away. And I used to walk up, I'd be like, okay, he used oil, like oil stick here, or like he, you know, he used a brush here, he hit it with like house paint here, you know, I try to like figure out how these dudes laid these like layers. reverse engineer it. Yeah, like, um, it's so wild that like you like started painting just by like, you know, your boy having you come over and just pour shit on there. And then you get like, you know, cause it, I, from what you're telling me, I don't gather it was a long time in between your first time of painting and you going back out there looking at all these Picasso's, but like the way that you speak about it, like, Oh, I'm looking at like how he's painting it on there. What type of thing it is. It's wild that like your brain kind of just like clicked into place as, as to be a, a student of art rather than just like an athlete. It's like, like you said, you changed one addiction to another. Like, I'm sure you were the same way with baseball. Like, how could I throw this curveball? How mm -hmm. could I throw this change up? Like looking at things like that. But it's, it's cool to hear you talk about it as like, you know, being an experienced, a more experienced artist now to hear you talk about the way that you were like conceptualizing your approach to you first starting it out. And like how you're looking at these paintings by these like, you know, these amazing artists and like what you're gathering and taking away from them. And like what your boy said about like never taking your phone in there and sketching it kind of is like, you know, it gives me, I have chills right now just thinking about that again, because like, I feel like that that's such like a powerful thing to be said. And like, that's dope. Yeah. I mean, Very dope. I still am like, I stick with that because I, so much of the stuff he taught me like in the beginning is just like things I like literally live by. It's what I, when I'm like, give lessons and I help younger artists now. Like I, I, it's the same thing. Like that'll be ingrained in my, that's like my core values as an artist, whatever he, what advice he gave me back then, you know, yeah. those, those, you know, um, like that was such a great thing for me and I still won't ever take the phone into the museum. Yeah. That's so sick. I really, really like that. But you, you, so you're looking at all these, like, you know, these Picasso pieces and like trying to, I guess, take, like apply those fundamentals to your work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, just seeing like the cute, the cubism was this this flow that was natural <laughs> for me. Um, yeah. Like the dissection of it, and that, that's really the root of it. Whether it's you know Basquiat, whether it's George Kondo, whether it's Satwambi, you know, all these dudes have different um, 
like complete different bodies of work, right? But like what it really comes down to, um, what these dudes come down to is dissection um, and the con- and constantly editing something, right? Yeah. And your brain doesn't want to keep dissecting something. It wants realism. Like it wants it to be all there. But then the, the whole like breaking it down, breaking it down more, breaking it down more, it really is like a dissection of whatever you're painting, whatever it is. And it's con- and you constantly are going back and you're changing it, you're taking layers away. Um, so these dudes all make different art, but that's what it was um, for me. It's just like, uh, you know, I can keep going over this. Like I can keep, you know, leave a little bit and just build these layers up. And uh, so I would, um, you know, I guess like I would see the cubism as like the perfect way to dissect something, you know, to break it down into each individual shape. And um, so that, that you know, Picasso has helped me so much with, uh, you know, but you still see all the influences in me and my work. You still see all these guys that I would, those, those times where I went to the museum and those ones that stuck with me, you still see all that in my work. It's helping me figure out really where I am, where I, what I want to express. Um, I'm not there yet still. Like you see all these guys stuff in my, you know, but it, this is a long, 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 long yeah, road. Yeah, I mean, you're very young at this compared, like, I mean, people have been painting their entire lives no, and like, yeah. I mean, you've been what, five years now? Six seven, years? Seven. Seven years, yeah. you said, yeah. And, um, oh, six and a half years. Um, yeah, no, you're a young, um, you're a young artist. You're a young artist in the art world is 35 years old about, you know, so like, I'm yeah. not even like there yet. That's what I mean. Like, I feel like, you know, just as someone following along with you, it's like, you really are like, you know, it's like hitting its stride now. It's like, I, I, as someone just like looking at your work, um, I, like I could see like different style, not style, but like things that you incorporate that were like, like one of my favorite pieces you did was a pressure cooker one. Oh yeah. It's like, I love those so much. Like, and like this one right here, it's like, it's like this. Yeah. It's like, I love I love like all the colors and things like that, but it, it, I don't know. It's it, it seems like much more. Uh, um, I see that's the thing. I'm not an artist, so I don't know how to describe it. But as you're trying to like describe it to me, it's it's that's why I'm like looking at these as you're like saying what you're saying because it's just like interesting to like hear how it's uh, how you're trying to like come to this. I don't know. It's it's wild to see because it, now whenever you're like you know painting all this. Are you, do you have like, uh, like, like what's your process as far as like, are you, are you kind of just doing like painting techniques in the beginning or are you like working on pieces? Like, are you, is that like a weird question to ask? Well, it's not how I, it, this, it, it how I go about this is, is really weird. It's yeah. like insane. It truly is. Like it really is insane shit. Cause I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, Literally, I don't know what's going to happen when I paint. And that's how it really was at the beginning. You know, as I get better, I have different control. I can flip, you know, flip composition. I can flip things to have a, you know, better idea where I'm going with it. Um, but in the beginning, man, it's just like, I, I don't don't even think about it, really. I just like... You, you were know, just, just going just and seeing paint. what happened. Yeah, just... And that was like the raw, that raw, like, because I, you know... I go blank, man, when I'm working for the most part, you know, like I'm thinking about like how, you know, I'm thinking about like my life. Like I'm thinking about like, you know, like a lot of stuff, like it gets dark, it's real dark, gets like, you know, and then it also becomes like magical and shit too. Um, but I'm not thinking about what I'm doing necessarily. Yeah. Um, it's just like emitting itself through the brush. Yeah. 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 Which sounds crazy, right? It sounds like, you know, like it doesn't um, really sound crazy. It, it makes me, it makes me think that I can understand it a little bit more because it's like, you know, I feel like whatever you're thinking about is easy to like, you know, for me to, the way that I'm like picturing it is if like you're going through like a dark time, so to speak, and mm-hmm. you're thinking about that, it's like, you might have a dark color. You might have like a, like a deeper red. That's almost like a, you know, there's some anger in there. There's some like dark, like colder feelings, you know, whereas if you're having like that glimmer of light where, you know, you might be, you know, times where you're like just chilling with your friends or stuff like that it could be like a brighter, like a more light, f- like, like, I don't know. That's just a way that like, from what you're explaining it to me, that's how I envision it a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it, it can be the opposite too, which is crazy. Like when I'm going through some, so like, you know, cause 
going through some of the harder things that, um, and they're not hard things, man. We just make it bigger, you know, be dramatic about shit. And yeah. I, you know, um, and, but like when I'm, when I'm real, like, I feel like I'm going to die a lot of times when I'm out there, when I'm out there working, you know, um, I work 12 hour days. I start in the morning in the summertime. Um, so I start when the sun pretty much comes up I'm going to try to be out there. And then I, when I, when the sun goes down is when I'm done for the day. And like that whole time, I might feel like I'm like dying or something, man, which is crazy. Like I'm, you know, my head's telling me, um, I'm not going to be around long. I'm not going to be, you know what I mean? You're going too fast. Like you're, you know, all this stuff. Um, like a constant critique in your mind. Yeah. Like, you know, this is like your tragedy, but it's also like, you know, like your mark, like, you know, and it's mm. like all this, you know, shit like that will go through my head. Like, and I'll make it a real big deal. Um, problems I got to deal with, like in the art world or, you know, these people are going to come get me or whatever it is, man. What I make a big deal, big deal out of like, um, that's, I make bright stuff in those times too. Cause that's how I get out of that. That's how I like fix that. Um, mm. like I turn that, you know, I turn all that like panic and I turn all that like anxiety and I try to turn that into like an in, in, in energy to be, to use. Yeah. Like a, a potent energy wow. to use. Um, Concentrated dose. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, those ones, you know, sometimes they are dark and they'll have mute, more muted colors and stuff, but sometimes they'll just be bright and they'll be like electric. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's wild. And, uh, cause I got to dig in there and get it somehow. Like I got to, like, especially in those times where I'm feeling like I might die today. Like it, it, it it's so insane. That's so when I say it to you now, it sounds insane, but yeah, it but really it, does feel like that. Like this could be it. Like, and that's how I do approach what I'm doing. Like I, this does matter so much to me. This is everything that I, I just, why I'm here. Yeah. So look at this piece right now is the last one. It got and it. I'm and at the end of the day, I'm out of here. Like it's got to mean something. Right. And it's got to, mm. I got to breathe the life into it. It can't be some fake ass shit. It's yeah. like, it got to be real. Yeah. Because I don't know if I get to do this again. Like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? This, and, and when the grand scheme of this is something I'm, I'm, I'm leaving behind it, just it's got to be real because it's got to it's it, it's supposed to be here it's supposed to do something for somebody even when you know i'm not or whatever so um you know yeah i you know I, i'll be in dark places but i try to deliver this thing to people i try to change that um, yeah be, and i and then it's like the tool for when they're feeling like that that's like their hope through it too hmm. you know and there's no like, oh, that's all right it's no like um you know, I don't know how to describe it, but, uh, that's all right. Now your, your mindset, like in the beginning, whenever you're doing this artwork, like, you know, how, how does it, how does it go from you? You know, like when you're out there and you're, you're saying you're grabbing this trash and you're just painting, mm -hmm. you know, is your mindset? Like, I just have to put in hours and time out there. You yeah, know, is this, that all you were doing is just painting? Well, I think it started with like, this is something <laughs> I need to do. Yeah. Um, to be okay. Like, this is something I need to do to iron out my problems. This is how I can like alleviate, um, some of the trauma. Like, and this is how I can see, like almost gauge where I'm actually at. Cause we go through so many things. The trauma is really affecting us subconsciously. We don't think about it, but it's there. Yeah. So like, it, I was like, okay, this is helping me like gauge like how messed up I am. And so at, at the beginning it was never about a career, um, that's what, that's more what I was getting at is like in the beginning, like your mindset, like, did you have this mindset that you were going to make this a career or was this just therapeutic in the beginning? It was therapeutic in the beginning. Yeah. Um, it was just about expressing myself. It yeah. was just about getting all this stuff. And that's why a lot of it, the beginning was like dark, like dark, real dark color on, on trash, you know, dark colors, like, um, a lot of that was like the like the throw up of like you know like literally like yeah, getting the poison out like yeah you know, like you know getting the you know like letting them toxins like release almost mm -hmm. yeah totally and so uh, mm. you know once that stuff started clearing up you know and I, I just I mean I was just finding these worlds that I, I having my own world where I could be dig into a painting all day and just get lost there, man. And that's like pitching, you know, nothing else in this mat world mattered when I was on the mound, just, yeah. to, just me and this batter. Hyper, hyper focus. Right. Yeah. So you're, I mean like literally no problems exist, no nothing. It's just like, this is your world. Um, you know, it's only like experimentation and see where we can like, you know, see where we can go with this. Let's, are you like listening to music, smoking weed while this is happening? Yeah, yeah totally. Now, is that like, uh, is that like something that like, 
you know, part of your like uh, your ritual is like music, you know, music, everything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, music is like the fuel. Like I get so deep in those dudes, okay. subconscious. You listen to the same stuff for twelve hours or whatever. You know, you're like yeah, in that artist subconscious as well. You know, like you're almost sharing a flow with him now. Yeah, it gets weird, you know. But yeah, the music, man. It's um, they give to me. You know, I hope I give something that gives back to them what they put out affects people on a greater scale. Yeah. So I see it as like this, like go hand in hand thing, you know, inspire the musician. Um, the musician inspires me, you know, we give that back and what we're doing is helping people in, you know, uh, in the long run, but music has everything. Um, wow. I, I need to paint in silence sometimes too. Um, but I just, you know, music just helps me catch these flows and these grooves, man. And I don't even, you know, yeah. I'm just like floating. That makes sense. Makes sense. That's interesting. Now you in the beginning, while you're still like kind of developing like your style and getting all this like raw shit out in the beginning, Mm -hmm. it's like, when does that like transition happen where you're like, you know, where it ends up being a potential to be a career? So, um, like how far into that? Uh, only a few weeks, honestly. Yeah. Um, only a few weeks. Um, I was working at the cheesecake factory. Um, I took acid for the first time. First time ever? First time ever. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. All right. Thank you for listening to part one with Stephen Jaskulski. You could finish up listening to part two next Thursday. See you then.